Hi everyone, Alexa here from the blog theduvalhomestead.com and today I'm going to share with you how to make homemade milk kefir. Making your own kefir is a great way to get really healthy probiotics into your gut and to get the beneficial bacteria that is naturally found in milk but is often stripped away when we pasteurize milk in modern times. We have been making milk kefir for a little while but before that we would buy kefir from the store. If you ever go to the grocery store you might see that there is milk kefir and yogurt with probiotics. See the word probiotics thrown around a lot on grocery store labels. I always wondered why there are so many products labeled gut friendly, probiotic, cultures, etc., and if they are really that good for you. And my research led me to starting my own kefir because I realized that the whenever you have a live culture, such as in a sourdough starter, for example, you want to really use it fresh. And there's it's so easy to maintain your own kefir grains or your own sourdough starter that I thought I would share with you how to do it on the blog here because if you aren't already, it will save you a lot of money and it is so much healthier for you too. On the blog, I write more about um, kind of my love for ancient nutrition and my thoughts about how back in the day, our ancestors drank raw milk and they would make sourdough products from you know non-stripped grain and food was just a lot more pure back then and i try for my family here to make food as pure as possible and to eat how god intended nature intended for us to eat um, the most pure as possible so every day we drink this kefir smoothie sometimes even twice a day and here today i'm going to make a smoothie after i film this video so i'm going to show you how i strain my kefir grains so first i'm going to show you how to make your own kefir it's really easy and then i'm going to talk more about tips for maintaining your kefir and how to be successful making kefir on your own so the basic process for using kefir is to get your grains if they are active and ready to go put them in milk now what kind of milk should you be using? You should not be using ultra pasteurized milk. The problem with ultra pasteurized milk is as the title indicates, it has been pasteurized to a very high degree, which means there's very little bacteria for the grains to eat and to grow with. If you have access to raw milk that is healthy and safe to drink in your opinion, I would use that. It has a lot of bacteria already that's active and great, the good bacteria, and the kefir will thrive in raw milk. If you do not have raw milk, a nice medium alternative is actually to buy something like goat's milk or cow's milk, but only the one that is lightly pasteurized. So if you go to the grocery store, you may not realize this, but most likely where you are, you have options at the grocery store of milk. Some milk is ultra pasteurized on the label, it says ultra pasteurized. And then other milk says VAT pasteurized, grade A, homogenized. It says pasteurized, but not ultra pasteurized. So that's a better alternative. It's just pasteurized less if that's what you're drinking. I like to buy milk that is ideally local and grass fed and lightly pasteurized. So that's what we have. And I also like to buy goat's milk. I've heard that kefir loves goat's milk. And so that's what we use. We use a very lightly pasteurized local goat's milk. And so that has a lot of options for you, but um, you have to use what's best for you but do not use ultra pasteurized because there's just not enough nutrients in there for the grains to thrive. So to use your kefir, first you're going to take the grains that you have, put them in a milk of choice that is not ultra pasteurized. I like to use these quart size mason jars that with the wide mouth and you just put the lid loosely on top and set it on your countertop and let it sit at room temperature all day. So I do this in the morning, it sits all day. By the end of the day, if your cultures are very active, you'll see some separation of the milk happen and the kefir will kind of be at the bottom, the grains will be floating on the top. That's how you know that they are probably done eating. And at that point, if you're not gonna make a smoothie that in that moment or something, or drink the milk, you can put it in the fridge, which is what I do, overnight, and then in the morning, pull it out and it's ready to make a smoothie. So you need to strain your grain. So pour the kefir mixture over a fine mesh strainer. You can also use a cloth or a tea towel or a mesh material. Pour it over the strainer into a bowl or the cup that you're gonna be drinking out of. 
and now you have kefir. If you ever doubt whether or not your kefir is ready, just give it a smell. It should smell like kefir, which is sour, but it kind of smells good. I think it smells good. If you drank kefir before, you'll know what the smell is. But just keep in mind that this is not flavored, it has no sugar. So if you're looking for a strawberry kefir, then you would, you're gonna have to flavor it with strawberries. You don't want it to smell like sour or bad milk, which is a very different smell if you've ever smelled that. When you're straining the grains, you want to use a wooden spoon to gently press the grains against the fine mesh strainer. This will help shred the grains of any excess milk buildup around the grain. You don't want the milk to kind of build up because then it will prevent the grain from actually accessing it. Then you just drink your kefir and enjoy. Next, you have your grains that are ready to be fed again. Next, you can put the grains right back in the same jar, add your milk, and leave it on the counter if you're gonna be using it if you wanna feed it the next day. I asked on my Instagram a few weeks ago, what are your questions about kefir? Because I had some people asking me questions. And a lot of people just wanted to know, really, what are the health benefits of kefir and where do you get kefir grains? So the health benefits of kefir are the fact that they are a grain that contains many microorganisms known as probiotics that actually eat away at the lactose in your milk. They are adding the good bacteria that is unfortunately stripped away from milk during the pasteurization process where we are trying to eliminate bad bacteria, we also eliminate good bacteria. You probably hear a lot nowadays about gut health and how important it is to have a healthy gut. You know, I'm no expert, but that is because when you are digesting your food, your gut, the acids in your gut and the production of your gut are what make it possible for you to assimilate nutrients. So it's very important that you have good gut health. You probably know already if you don't have good gut health because you might have symptoms like it could be allergies, inflammation, autoimmune disorders in extreme cases, or maybe just lactose intolerant. You may possibly even be able to drink kefir if you are lactose intolerant because the kefir grains eat at the lactose that's in the milk. It is also a good source of calcium and vitamin K. And when you have good gut health, that means other systems in your body are working better. You have reduced inflammation, which is lessen lessening your chance of getting things like cancer. So it's just something that is just my opinion, too easy not to do every single day to promote health, it tastes great, and it saves a lot of money. Where do you get kefir grains? I recommend getting them from a neighbor if you can because they will be really fresh and they will be active and they'll probably be free because when you start using kefir grains, they grow and multiply quickly. So you may already have a neighbor or somebody in your community that has way too many kefir grains that they'd be happy to give to you. Now, you can also buy kefir grains online. This is what I did um, when I started first using kefir. I didn't know that I should even ask somebody near me. Um, and I bought them online. I will leave a link below to the ones that I bought. There are several places you can buy them. Etsy is a great resource because you can actually get the live cultures off Etsy. Now the thing about buying them online is that when they are shipped to you, they will be hungry and they may even starve depending on how long it takes to arrive. So what you need to know is that it will take a while for the grains to eat and come back to life enough to make kefir. So when I first started with my grains, I think I took about seven to 14, I can't remember, different feeding rotations for me to smell the milk and know that it was kefir. Now I think it probably was strong enough by about feed number seven, but I didn't know and I was not sure. I waited until I really got that kefir smell. But with that said, once you go through that initial process, which I actually talk more about how to do that on the blog, then you have strong, beautiful kefir grains and it's easy. If you get them from somebody local to you, they will likely have been fed that day and you can just dive right into making kefir. So kefir grains are these little white balls and they are not actually grain like a flour grain. They um, are, like I said, microorganisms that are probiotic and they are alive, so they need to be fed every day. Now, you don't have to feed them every day if you don't want to use the kefir every day. So if you are familiar with sourdough starter, it's the same kind of idea. If you use your starter every day, then you would feed it every day. But if you're not familiar with sourdough starter, um, basically the idea is that if you let them ferment the milk and eat away at the milk during the day, they will be hungry at the end of the day. So about 12 to 24 hours of fermenting the milk on the counter, and they will be ready to go, the kefir will be done, and the grains need to be refed. So you can either refeed them and then put them back on your counter if you're gonna use them again, or you can put them in some milk and throw in your fridge, and they can last for 
I believe up to about a week until they really need more food. When the kefir grains are in the fridge at the colder temperature, they eat much slower, so you don't need to be feeding them every single day. So I suggest getting into a habit of making kefir every day, especially if you like to make smoothies in the morning. That way, it's just a nice rotation, you're used to doing it every morning, and you never have to worry about feeding your grains. But if you go on vacation or you have a break from kefir for whatever reason, rest assured, they will be fine in the fridge. They are very hard to kill, kind of like sourdough starter. If you think, oh, it's been eight days and my grains are probably dead, they are probably not. They're actually very resilient. Even if I haven't tried a couple weeks, but my guess would be even after a couple weeks in the fridge, they would probably still be fine. But you might have to revive them with a couple feedings, smaller feedings to kind of get them back to speed. Another important note is that milk kefir grains are not the same as yogurt grains or water kefir grains. So you might think, how is this different than yogurt? And the truth is, it's just a very different type of probiotic and bacteria. So yogurt is generally thicker than kefir, but kefir is thicker than milk. So you cannot swap out milk kefir grains for a water kefir, which if you don't know what that is, it's like making your own soda or yogurt grains. So you need to be very specific with what kind of grains you're buying. Well, I hope this helped you make milk kefir and you have a better understanding of why you would make it, all the benefits, and are excited to get started on your own. Just like any vegetable or grain, when you learn fermentation, it just takes a little bit of practice and then you become a lot more comfortable with it. I know a lot of people, including myself, would have been intimidated by this process before I had done it. And once you do it and you find success with it and you start to enjoy it, it becomes just part of your lifestyle, which is exactly my goal. And I hope that I'm able to help you do that too. If you are brand new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Every week I post new farm to table recipes and homemade natural living from our homestead here in Duval. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.